This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. From CGTN headquarters in Beijing, this is The Hub with Wang Guan. Hello and welcome to The Hub. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. On February the 27th, the official Ukrainian government's Twitter account posted this clip. It shows a Ukrainian military plane soaring in the sky and claimed that it had taken down 10 Russian planes. The identity of the pilot was not mentioned but was already given the nickname Ghost of Kyiv. So far, the tweet has garnered over 80,000 likes and 13,000 retweets. What is the catch? It might be man-made. Fact-checking websites debunked the video for its lack of authenticity. During the fast-paced coverage of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the boundary between facts and myths are often blurred. What role are social media playing in building the narratives for each side? To discuss all this, I'm joined at this hour in Beijing by Victor Gaojukai, Chair Professor at Suzhou University. And also, I'm joined in uh, Kyiv, Ukraine, by Miloka Mikola Vorobirov, a Ukrainian journalist in Kyiv or Kiev. Uh, welcome to the hub on CGTN, gentlemen. You know, we have seen this before, right? The images of uh, dozens, if not hundreds, of civilians being killed uh, this time around in the, unfortunately and tragically, in the Ukrainian city of Bucha. It has shocked the world. President Zelensky said that Moscow should be brought to justice. Uh, Moscow, of course, categorically denied the Ukrainian charges, uh, saying opposite things. Which side should we believe at this point, Victor? Well, in a matter of war, the first victim probably is truth. And deceit is actually part of war. And uh, therefore, in the middle of the war, which is really very, very terrible for Ukraine and for the rest of the world, I think we need to really go through a very rigorous process to really get to the bottom of the truth, if any. And any emotional discharge based on allegations themselves should not be very constructive. And uh, as far as Butcher is concerned, I think an independent verification and investigation will be absolutely necessary and preconditional as far as the real truth is concerned. Mikola, what do you think? Uh, which side should we believe? What happened in Bucha? Well, actually, I live uh, nearby Bucha. It's like 20 miles away from Kiev. And for me, it's not a question. Of course, Russian invade, Russians, they invaded Ukraine. Uh, they committed all these atrocities. And I mean, for me, it's a fact. Uh, so basically, I want to you, you bring you back to this, the pretext of this war. Uh, uh, also, it's, it was not declared, so officially it's not a war. Russians, they called it uh, at the beginning a special military operation. But it brings us back to uh, 2014, when Russians, they annexed Crimea, and then they invaded Donbass, eastern regions of Ukraine, and they launched a hybrid warfare there. As a result, 40,000 people were dead, and now we observe the continuation of Putin's ambitions of grabbing more Ukrainian land and reestablishing a great Russian empire, or, he, or the, um, how he call it. So basically what happens to Bucha, uh, these uh, massive uh, atrocities, you know, uh, Ukrainian authorities there were able to reveal it, and they took international media to see these all mass graves and uh, to interview all these people who live there. So the people, uh, the media all over the world, they had the chance to cover all this. We have a satellite image from different uh, agencies, not only Western, but also uh, from Asia, from other media. So basically everybody can see it. And uh, I agree uh, 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 with uh, those that we have just to divide, of course, it has to be the fact checking and so forth. And uh, Ukrainian side is open to it. So basically, we don't hide anything. So everybody can go there, can interview those people who lived through this uh, nightmare. And it's uh, pretty open, actually, unless their territory is clean out of mining and so forth, because 
before Russians left they mined this territory. You know, it's still dangerous for a while, but yeah. after all the work, you know, after the unmining and the area is safe, everybody are able to go and check by themselves. But Mykola, Russia denied killing those, you know, dozens, if not, if not hundreds of civilians in Bucha near Kyiv, and they also caught that uh, uh, provocations, they caught that Bucha provocations, and they raised the issue in the UN Security Council. What would be your response to the Russian counterclaim? Well, as a research fellow at John Hopkins University, at, uh, I had a chance just to work like with Russian propaganda and how it denies all these facts, actually. And at this point, Russia is a clear aggressor. Of course, not Ukrainians attack Russia, but vice versa. So Putin decided just to restore his, uh, I mean, ambitious uh, and implement this as so-called Russian war. So uh, I don't I, I don't think that, I mean, over the last eight years and the invasion of Crimea, Russians claim that Ukraine attacked itself. So that's Ukraine who attacked Donbass. That's Ukraine who attacked Crimea and so forth. So, I mean, basically, in May, all, or, or this time, as of 2014, uh, many uh, of these charges, many of these Russians' accusations and mis disinformation were dismissed, so basically. And uh, I don't see any reason even just to, to uh, how to say, just to uh, try just to, 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 to dismiss it right now, because basically, I mean, according to Russians, so are Ukrainians killed yeah. their own people yeah. to show that Russia is a uh, and Putin is a war criminal, and many of Western politicians they claim so. So basically, I mean, they try to manipulate information, but the truth is clear. For me, as a local resident, as a guy who had a chance to interview yeah. all these people, I mean, I mean, I trust to my what I saw. I trust to my uh, my my own sources. So. Basically, I mean, the Russian state... Of course, the loss of life is tragic, life. it goes without saying. I mean, any uh, cause for, for less, loss of life will be and should be condemned. Uh, Victor, what do you think? I mean, how do you think the Bucha incident, uh, if we can call it one, will affect the situation on the battlefield and at the negotiating tables going forward? Well, first of all, uh, allow me to uh, pray for all those people who lost their lives in Bucha, uh, including the military officers and soldiers on both sides, as well as civilians in Bucha. Now, in the middle of the war, no one denied that fierce battle happened in Bucha, and uh, uh, losses were very heavy on both sides, on the military side, and uh, lots of civilians were killed. Now, as far as the investigation is concerned, you really need to be very careful. For example, the allegation was that lots of civilians were killed. Were they civilians? Were they soldiers in civilian clothes? Or were they civilians who took up arms against Russian soldiers, for example? All this need to be verified. Now, for the moment, suffice it to say that de-escalation, as far as Ukraine is concerned, is the best way for Ukraine. Because Ukrainian military operations or war is not the first war in Europe after the end of the Second World War. We all know what happened to the former Yugoslavia, the big bomb, bombing and war led by NATO. And uh, we all know that when the dust settled, seven countries emerged out of the ashes of the former Yugoslavia. I hope Ukraine will not repeat this uh, tragedy of the former Yugoslavia and uh, Ukraine joining NATO as far as I'm concerned, is a dead end because that will not bring peace and stability and happiness to Ukrainians. It will not bring peace and stability in that part of the Europe. And uh, it may actually push the situation out of control into the Second World War. So You mean the I Third World War? Third okay. World War, exactly. And I think uh, for Ukraine to achieve neutrality probably is the only right way for Ukraine. In order to achieve this, I think de-escalation is absolutely important because this is the most effective way to save as many civilian lives in Ukraine as possible. Otherwise, more civilian lives will be lost in Ukraine. And when we are very focused on uh, Bucha and uh, uh, other areas in Ukraine where battles are now happening, we also need to know that battles in the eastern part of Ukraine uh, 
have been lasting ever since 2014. And uh, uh, extreme measures uh, were taken by both sides of the battle. And we also need to acknowledge that war in itself is always brutal. And I think uh, the top priority for the Ukrainian government, I hope, will be to save as many Ukrainian civilian lives as possible. Uh, Mikola, do you want to respond to what Victor has just said? Well, I mean, uh, with all due respect, I, I wouldn't compare Ukraine to Yugoslavia because first and foremost, Yugoslavia it was a dictatorship country. So the president Milosevic, he uh, launched, uh, actually uh, conducted oppres oppression on his own population. And we know what happened in Srebrenica, in Kosovo, uh, back then in, 19, uh, in 1992, and basically, then it was uh, a kind of atrocities against uh, his own population. So when they invade, uh, they, uh, they rush, uh, the uh, Serbian troops, they uh, went to Kosovo and that uh, uh, they committed as uh, international court recognized it as a suicide. So Ukraine is uh, unlike uh, Yugoslavia, Ukraine uh, democracy, uh, it uh, has independent free fair elections. Well, Victor, what do you think? Well, absolutely. The former Yugoslavia and uh, Ukraine today are very, very different. However, it is a fact that out of the ashes of the former Yugoslavia, seven countries emerged. And I just hope. Ukraine will be able to maintain its sovereignty and territorial integrity, but not through war. I, th I hope the allegations or the insistence that Ukraine joining NATO uh, will not be a real prospect as far as the Ukrainian leaders are concerned. Only through negotiation and peaceful resolution of whatever problems in involving Ukraine will bring lasting peace and stability to Ukraine. Now, how to achieve this? Uh, it will involve lots of technical details, but it is only through peace and dialogue that lasting peace will be restored to Ukraine. To escalate, especially to be urged by the United States and NATO member states to turn Ukraine into the battleground between Russia on the one hand and NATO on the other hand, may not be the best way as far as the Ukrainian people are concerned. Save more Ukrainian civilian lives, restoring peace in a lasting way is the better way for Ukraine. I mean, uh, Mikola, what do you think? What is the better way for Ukraine right now when it comes to the, you know, stopping the war, uh, making progress at the negotiating table? Uh, before the, uh, the invasion in 2014, uh, around 30% of population, they supported joining NATO and roughly the same number joining the European Union. Uh, while about 50%, like half of population, they were Russian speakers. After the invasion, the numbers has changed. Now about unprecedented number, about 90% 90, uh, 90 they support joining NATO and about 80% they support joining European Union. So basically, by invading, Moscow achieved the opposite result. Before, people were very skeptical about NATO and about integration of their country to the West. Now it's different. When country is under the attack, when people experience like uh, high casualties of uh, the, uh, among especially uh, civilians, of course, and the militaries, they want the protection. They want to, in to be integrated in NATO and other uh, uh, security alliance. At this point, the uh, European Union and NATO, there is no alternative. Furthermore, people who are the, the harsh bombing, uh, uh, bombardment right now, so for example, in Mariupol and Kharkiv, those people are Eastern Ukrainian populations. So most of them are Russian speakers. Furthermore, most of them voted yeah. for pro-Russian parties in the parliament, actually. And now they are suffering most of anybody as, than anybody else in Ukraine. So basically, by attacking Ukraine, Putin not integrate it into the so-called Russian world, but it's disintegrated it from it. Now, more and more Ukrainians, of course, obviously, they want to be 
out of Russia, they want to be close to the West. Well, uh, Victor, do you want to respond? Well, allow me to mention that joining NATO is a dead end, not only now, but possibly in the future. Why? One precondition of joining NATO is that the applicant country should have no existing territorial uh, disputes or claims. Now that Ukraine insists that uh, Crimea belongs to Ukraine, the eastern parts of Ukraine belongs to Ukraine, these really qualify for existing territorial disputes. So by definition, Ukraine will not qualify as a member state of Ukraine, uh, NATO unless these territorial disputes are resolved. How do you resolve that? By war or through negotiation. This is the time for greater wisdom for the Ukrainian leaders and for the Ukrainian people on the precondition that saving lives for the Ukrainian people will always be the best strategy. And only by negotiation will there be lasting peace between Russia and Ukraine, and also in Ukraine, as well as all the countries and regions beyond that. There is also a real danger that the war in Ukraine may get out of control. It may spill over into other countries, including NATO member states, and then you may bring NATO into this war. So the scale and the magnitude of the future war originating from this Ukrainian war is beyond imagination. This is why the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Guterres, has on many occasions emphasized de-escalate, de-escalate, and de-escalate, because he is, rightly, as many people in the world, worried about getting out of control, and when mankind looks into the specter of a nuclear holocaust, it will be equally bad, if not much worse, then whatever terrible things we are witnessing in this war in Ukraine today. Save Ukrainian people is as important as saving mankind. On the other way, saving mankind is as important as saving Ukrainian civilian lives today. Mikola, doesn't Victor have a point? Yes, absolutely. So I would partly agree with that, that Ukraine will not join NATO in the foreseeable future due to their conflicts on these territories and, uh, of course, due to this, uh, uh, these uh, articles of NATO. But uh, Ukrainian parliament has voted the amendments in 2018 about the path uh, uh, to the uh, amendments to the constitution about the path toward NATO and toward the European Union. As Ukraine reminds democracy, even if, the, uh, if President Zelensky wanted to bring neutrality at the table on the negotiations he has to count the view of the ukrainian people who can't he can't actually dictate either ukraine should join nato or not it's up to ukrainian people to decide like it works in the democracy so i believe there were some rumors basically that well let's exclude this amendment regarding the joining nato from the ukrainian constitution but you can do it, you can't, he can't, uh, Zelensky can't do it single-handedly. He has to get enough votes in the Rada, in the parliament. And I doubt he can do this, he can find the majority. That's the first. Okay, guys, so let's talk about the role of social media here, because it is important. The information is key here. Uh, we're swamped by an avalanche of online posts telling us contradicting things things that are at odds with each other, depending on which side uh, you're listening to. Um, which side, Victor, do you think so far has resorted to uh, information warfare or misinformation warfare? And perhaps the more important question to ask is, how has uh, the information warfare affected uh, the situation on the battlefield? Well, I think uh, the real battle for the truth right now is not only happening on social media, it's also involving all the established media of the Western countries versus the official media of Russia, for example, and the rest of the world. So there are so many different versions of the truth. And uh, uh, over the past several years, the United States has been talking a lot about alternative truth, for example, rather than absolute truth. Hmm. I think how to get to the absolute truth or the real truth or nothing but the truth is really a challenge for everyone in the world. And uh, as far as social media is concerned, first of all, it's much more popularized and it is much more difficult to verify the truthfulness behind any 
real facts, for example, being projected onto social media. It requires special knowledge and skills and professional help to get to the real facts as far as the social media is concerned. Now, I would say Western countries, including the United States and European countries, have a better preparedness when they are engaged in media reports, on established media on the one hand, as well as on social media. So I think this creates even greater challenge for mankind as a whole to really get to the bottom of each of these allegations to know what exactly is happening in Ukraine. And also, for example, NATO versus uh, European Union. I think joining European Union is not a problem at all, but joining NATO under such circumstances, not only for 2022, but for future, for the coming 10 years or 50 years or 100 years, all these things really would need to have been vetted and verified rather than, for example, just throw onto the uh, global stage for consumption of the world. And also, President Zelensky's allegation that the United Nations should be wrapped up for example, and Russia should be uh, deprived of the permanent seat on the permanent uh, members of the United Nations Security Council, or the United Nations should repeat the fate of the League of Nations. All these things not only need to be verified by the official media, by social media, but also by responsible statesmen and politicians and the world community at large. Well, uh, Mikola, what do you think about the role of social media? Are, are they mostly a force for good, if you will, uh, helping you know, amplifying the voice of the voiceless, or perhaps helping spread uh, rumors and disinformation more often? Well, uh, it's both. Social uh, truth matters, especially truth is crucial during such a horrible times of war, especially it with this if it happens on your land, on your territory. And especially when it reached the top tensions, as we didn't see Sunday Cuban missile crisis where, during the Cold War. And this point, of course, the truth uh, is important in social media. And uh, for uh, Ukraine, for all international society, I believe that uh, many uh, follows uh, what happens in our country right now. But uh, despite the war, despite some, some, some governments, sometimes, you know, they launch the military censorship. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in Ukraine, you still have all media, all these social networks, everything in the Internet. Everything is accessible right now. So people can post everything they want freely for publishing uh, uh, what they see, what they think and so forth. So uh, thanks to the social media, President Zelensky, who was a comedian, and he played the president in his TV show called Servant on the People, because he became so famous only through the media, because it was free. He criticized the authorities, he criticized then President Yanukovych and then Poroshenko, and that's how he became popular. So in democracy, social media is uh, crucial, I believe so. And unlike Russia, yeah. Ukraine did not shut, da uh, shut uh, down its uh, social media. So basically, uh, all, all, all of them is... Uh, but Mikola, right? Ukraine, with its president Vladimir Zelensky, did uh, ban Russian media networks or some pro-Russian media networks. Uh, well, they claim it was a propaganda. And uh, the social media, I would say, that is as dangerous as uh, fighting with a weapon. So if someone on that side exaggerate uh, propaganda and some of their anchors, for example, RIA Novosti, the state uh, social media, they call to kill Ukrainians. They, scale, they say Ukrainians are Nazi and not on the, the military, but they call for action called the average Ukrainians. Right. And that's end up with atrocities what we saw in Bucha. I don't see any Nazi here. Right. I live here. So you can ask me. You can go here by yourself and just verify. But if somebody it's blow up the war, it actually inspires the Russian militaries to, confer, uh, to commit these crimes. So that's why they are in charge and they have to be punished. Well, Victor, what is propaganda, actually? A word, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, first populated, first used by the churches in the 19th and 18th century, and then populated by the Americans calling their opponents, the Soviet Union and China doing propaganda, uh, you know, disregarding what itself has been doing over the decades. Well, I would say propaganda is a relative term. And uh, uh, just like a truth, uh, under many circumstances, is relative. And uh, your propaganda may be uh, his truth, and his truth may be your propaganda, for example. So it really depends on the context. Now, as far as Ukraine is concerned, I think the real truth, and this is not propaganda, the real truth is to de-escalate and save as many civilian lives in Ukraine as possible. And in this context, allow me to add one point to Nikolai. Mm. Nikolai, please do take care. I consider myself as a friend of the Ukrainian people, both those Ukrainians who speak Ukrainian language as well as those Ukrainians who speak Russian language. I wish the Ukrainian people all the best wishes and de-escalate, de-escalate and de-escalate. Wrap up the war as quickly as possible. This is the only right way for Ukraine and the future of Ukraine. All right. Finally, we know that YouTube and Facebook blocked Russia today and Sputnik News in Europe. RT America was permanently shut down. Uh, Victor, is the principle of freedom of speech and equal access to multiple sources of information at risk in the West? Absolutely. I think uh, when the Western countries, especially the United States, hold themselves out as defenders of freedom of the media, freedom of speech, for example, they need to apply the same standard to all the media in the world. And when they shut down, for example, Russian media outlets, when they try to curb uh, CGTN in the United States, for example, they are actually doing harm to the principle of freedom of the media, freedom of the speech, and fundamentally, this will not enable mankind as a whole to really get to the real truth. Yeah, um, uh, Mikola, uh, finally, we know that the world's well, major media... Oh, okay, go ahead, sir. It's not Russia versus Ukraine. It's the authoritarianism versus democracy. And in this case, uh, it's up to the people to decide their paths, their face, and, uh, the, and their future, actually. And if people want to join the Western civilization, not the Russian world, that's their right to do so. And just adding to Victor's remarks, I would say that it's not on the victim's side to decide either de-escalate or escalate. Ukraine is a victim of, of, of an aggression. So it's the aggressor who decides whether the atrocities will continue or it will stop. Well, Victor, talking about you know uh, democracy or referendum, brother, uh, I remember back in the day there was a referendum in Crimea. Uh, absolutely. Democracy will be very, very important. Without democracy, there will be no modernization. And I hope democracy will really come to all the countries in the world, including Ukraine, as they believe they are already a democracy, and Russia eventually. And China, we are a democracy with strong Chinese characteristics. So let's promote democracy as it is, but don't weaponize democracy, but don't use democracy to establish blocks of one block against the other, because that's not the right thing. And I would say democracy would also involve a higher level of wisdom, a higher level of courage to face the realities as it is. Now, Nikolai, I'm sure you read Bible. And in the Bible, Jesus said, when someone slap you on the right cheek, you turn your left cheek to be slapped. Why? Because this is the higher level of courage, higher of level of uh, wisdom. Because right now, as far as Ukraine is concerned, the only thing matters is to save the Ukrainian people. Rather than urging the Ukrainian people to fight until the last Ukrainian Alrighty. standing, that's not fair to the Ukrainian people. Alrighty, guys, people. gentlemen, thank you for coming on the show, uh, joining us on The Hub on CGTN. Thank you both for joining us at this hour. And that will do it for this edition of The Hub. Thank you for watching. Our news coverage continues. Bye and take care.